Hello friends, welcome to Simplified Biology. Today's topic is Development of Pollens in Angiosperms. Development of pollens or the microspores in angiosperms, that is the flowering plants. The male reproductive part of the flower is the androsium, which is made up of stamens. A stamen consists of two anther lobes joined to each other by a connective and a filament. Now, anthers are bilobed, that is they have two lobes. Each lobe has two microsporangia or the pollen sacs. This is one lobe and this is the other lobe, each having two pollen sacs. Hence, the anthers in angiosperms are tetrasporangiate, that is having four microsporangia. Now, the ball of the anther is a many-layered structure. Outermost layer is epidermis, inner to which lies the endothesium. The inner radial walls of the endothesium are thickened. Fibrous thickening can be seen. It is the main protective layer of the anther. Lying inner to the endothesium are one to three middle layers, the cells of which get crushed by the time the spores are formed. So in a fully mature anther, epidermis and endothesium are present. Inner to the middle layers is the tapetum, cells of which can be uninucleated or multinucleated. Because the tapetal cells divide as the microspore mother cells divide and by the time the spores are formed, they get utilized. So their function is they provide nutrition to the developing spores. And inner to the anther wall lies the sporogenous tissue. Next, microsporogenesis. Now the sporogenous tissue lying inner to the anther wall behaves as the microspore mother cells. These microspore mother cells undergo meiosis to form the microspore tetract. Formation of microspore from microspore mother cell due to meiosis is known as microsporogenesis. The spores remain attach, attached in the tetrad stage by the help of callose carbohydrate. Now as the spores mature, they dehydrate, that is lose water and become spherical due to which they lose contact with each other and forming each individual microspore or the pollen. Now the wall formation during the formation of the tetrad is isobilateral in case of monocots and is tetrahedral in case of dicots. In some plants like Drosera, Elodia and Typha, the pollens remain in the tetrad stage and are as such pollinated. They are referred as compound pollens, while in members of family Esculpidiac, this is your Calotropis family and in members of family Orchidaceae, 
the bilobed anther is as such pollinated, where each lobe is referred as the pollinium, and this is the translator. It is pollinated by insects which carry them on their back. Next is dehiscence of anther. Now, as the microsporangia mature, the wall between two adjacent sporangia breaks up, they fuse with each other and this region forms the line of dehiscence. It is from this region that the anther opens up and the pollen grains are released. The pollen grains, as you can see in this picture, are of various shapes, size, color, designs and even textures. A pollen is a unicellular, uninucleated structure. Having a two-layered wall, outer thick exine, inner thin entine. It has cytoplasm that is rich in starch and unsaturated oils. Exine is made up of sporopollenin, which is secreted by abish bodies present in tapetum. Sporopollenin is the most resistant material found on earth as it can withstand enzymes, strong acid, alkali and even high temperature. That is why pollens are usually found as fossils. Entine is made up of pectocellulose. There are certain regions in the spore wall where the exine is absent, they form the germ pore. Germ pore are three in number in dicots and one in monocots. It is the region from which the pollen tube comes out. In insect pollinated pollens, present out of the spore wall is a sticky layer called the pollen kit. It is made up of lipids and carotenoids. It acts as an insect attractant and it also protects the pollens from the harmful UV rays. The pollen grain or the microspore is the first cell of the male gametophyte. It starts germinating or dividing when still present in the anther. In 60% angiosperms, the pollens are released in two cell stage. That is, when they have a larger vegetative cell and a smaller generative cell. While in the rest 40% cases, the pollens are released in three cell stage. That is, when the generative cell have divided to form two male gametes. In this diagram, we can see that the pollen grain consists of two cells. The larger is the vegetative cell with its nucleus in it and a smaller spindle shaped generative cell that floats in the vegetative cell. Further development occurs after pollination or post-pollination that is when the pollens 
have reached the stigma. Now the vegetative cell of the pollen grain absorbs water and it comes out of the germ pore forming the pollen tube. Now this is the pollen tube and the nucleus of the vegetative cell is found present at the tip in the form of tip nu tube nucleus. While the generative cell has divided to form two male gametes which lie behind the tube nucleus in the pollen tube. Viability of pollens means the time till they remain functional or able to germinate differs in different plants. In rice and wheat, the pollens are viable for just 30 minutes. While in members of family Rosaceae, that is the rose family, Leguminaceae, pea family, Solanaceae, potato family, the pollens are viable for months. Pollen viability also depends upon environmental conditions like temperature and humidity. Pollens are stored in liquid nitrogen that is at minus 196 degrees Celsius for years in pollen banks. These stored pollens can be used in crop breeding programs. Next, pollen allergy. Pollens of certain plants cause severe allergies. They cause respiratory disorders like asthma, bronchitis. Example of one such plant is Parthenium, commonly known as carrot grass, which normally was not found in India, but has entered India through imported wheat. Other examples of plants whose pollen causes allergies are Chinopodium, Amaranthus, Sohargum, Ricinus. And last, pollens are highly nutritive. Pollen tablets are found in markets. They are used as food supplements. Pollens are used to improve the performance of athletes and racehorses. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Thank you.